They piled up the seats of the forum for the great fire that reduced his body to ashes and later raised a column to him as to the father of his people. Such was the inscription on the capital. They did him more honor, dead as he was, than they had any right to confer upon any man in the world, except, perhaps, on those who had killed him. They didn't even neglect these Roman emperors to assume generally the title of tribune of the people, partly because this office was held sacred and inviolable, and also because it had been founded for the defense and protection of the people, and enjoyed the favor of the state. By this means they made sure that the populace would trust them completely, as if merely used the title and did not abuse it. Today there are still some who do not behave very differently. They never undertake an unjust policy, even one of some importance, without prefacing it with some pretty speech concerning public welfare and common good. You well know, O oh Longa, this formula, which they use quite cleverly in certain places, although for the most part, to be sure, there cannot be cleverness where there is so much impudence. The kings of the Assyrians, and even after those, them, those of the Medes showed themselves in public as seldom as possible in order to set up a doubt in the minds of the rabble as to whether they were not in some way more than men, and thereby to encourage people to use their imagination for those things which they cannot judge by sight. Thus a great many nations who for a long time dwelt under the control of the Assyrians became accustomed with all this mystery to their own subjection and submitted the more readily for not knowing what sort of master they had, or scarcely, even if they had one, all of them fearing by report someone they had never seen. The earliest kings of Egypt rarely showed themselves without carrying a cat or sometimes a branch or appearing with fire on their heads, masking themselves with these objects and parading like worker, workers of magic. By doing this, they inspired their subjects with reverence and admiration, whereas the people, neither too stupid nor too slavish, they would merely have aroused, it seems to me, amusement and laughter. It is pitiful to review the list of devices that early despots used to establish their tyranny, to discover how many little tricks they employed, always finding the populace conveniently gullible, readily caught, in the net as soon as it was spread. Indeed, they always fooled their victims so easily that while mocking them, they enslaved them the more. What comment can I make concerning another fine counterfeit that ancient people accepted as true money? They believed firmly that the great toe of Pyrrhus, king of Epirus, performed miracles and cure diseases of the spleen. They even enhanced the tale further with the legend that this toe after the corpse had been burned was found among the ashes untouched by the fire. In this wise a foolish people itself invents lies and then believes them, 